Hello everybody, welcome back to Level 1 News. Today is March 4th. This is Robot, Space, and Nonsense. Hopefully the best part of the week. Well, maybe hopefully not the best part. The robot stories are very heartwarming, unless you wanted a job flipping burgers. <laughs> I don't think anyone wants that job. Does anybody aspire to that? Yeah. I think it's more like, uh, I need to pay bills. So. You know, I bet there's some developmentally challenged people who do aspire to that. I mean, I love it. there's probably also a lot of people that are just really tired of their insanely stressful job, but it's like, hey, flipping burgers pays $20 an hour. Sounds good to me. I think that can be pretty stressful. Yeah. Yeah. You have to do it quickly. Well, let's talk about some robots now. We talked about this robot a while back, but it's taken Amazon some time to roll it out. Probably don't want to prioritize chips for something this silly. Yeah. And maybe because no one cared. <laughs> Amazon's Astro Robot is making its way to customers, but here's how buyers are using it. It's basically yeah. Alexa on wheels. Yeah, there's a, a video here of it getting a beer. And a video of it harassing a dog. Delivers a beer, chases a dog. It really doesn't do much of anything. <laughs> that guy could have got better cabinets for his kitchen. Wow. <laughs> it's kind of judgmental. <laughs> He's rocking the old, like, 70s parquet floor, too, so. Yeah. I'm sure that guy, when he took that picture, he was not expecting his cabinets to be judged. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Rue, if she, if I put that machine in front of her, Rue would just immediately knock that shit over. Just instantly. <laughs> I'm trying to bring some happiness and joy to our viewers. I don't know what you want. <laughs> Tell us what you want. <laughs> well, what I want is robot-made burgers. And I want them now. And I can get them very soon. At White Castle. White Castle to hire 100 robots to flip burgers. The robotics program will take uh, the place in nearly one third of the company's locations. This is Flippy, I think, isn't it? It's not Flippy. <gasps> it's Flippy 2. Oh. Dun, 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 dun. The sequel. An upgrade. You remember the original Flippy was mounted down here. Oh, All right. Yeah. The new one is mounted on this thing up here on a track that can move. That's probably uh, a lot easier to clean, like when they mop at night. Mm -hmm. Just Smart. like the robot in the made for TV movie on the sci fi channel called Homewrecker. And uh, it's, it's a deep cut. <laughs> <laughs> he can he can work those fry baskets as well as flipping burgers and every other kind of sandwich at this point. Flippy is getting better and better. White Castle is kind of garbage food though. Don't yeah, you? I don't think I've been to a White Castle probably in at least ten years. But remember from Dunk, the Duncan Hines book that it wasn't good restaurants that people wanted; it was consistency. And this will make White Castle even more consistent. They could be poised to dominate the fast food landscape. Consistently trash is a good way to look at the modern lifestyle. It really yeah. is. Predictably horrible. Except sometimes you get a wild card and there's a war in Europe. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's consistently bad. Well, uh, we know that Clearview has all of our faces. And if they don't yet, it's only a matter of time. And then that database will leak, which means it's only a matter of time that everybody has all of our faces. But maybe it doesn't matter because real faces are so 2021. Humans find AI-generated faces more trustworthy than the real thing. This, this reads like old school Freud, where use this language to manipulate the, the, <laughs> the superego and the id in order to get desirable outcome X. And it was a pretty small sample size too, it wasn't like 300 people. Something right, like but the tests seem pretty, uh, you know, rigorous, and they were able to repeat it in another uh, larger test, I think. Uh, trustworthiness, too, is just, it's like, how symmetrical is their face? Do both of their <laughs> eyes look in the same place? <laughs> they have a, a jutting brow. <laughs> yeah. And they didn't say it was always good, but the average was the people felt like the generated faces were a little bit better. But remember that, you know... Genetics can give you a terrible face. Yeah. Right. But an adversarial network will always give you a pretty decent one. Yeah. I think that's what we learned from that. That's a uh, Frodo makes that comment when they meet Strider for the first time in Bree. He was like, Oh, I knew I could trust you and Aragorn's like, Why? And he's like, Because if you were a servant of the enemy, you would feel you would look fairer but feel fouler. So he was kinda throwing shade. Yeah, he was like, you look like you're shady as hell, but I trust you because you're actually legit. So it seems like maybe they cast a guy who was a little too good looking for that part. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> Though I did really like his performance. That is kind of true to life, too. It's like you can't you can't judge a book by its cover. Yeah. It's like the trustworthiness of uh, 
you know the the the, <laughs> the toothless old dude with the with the scary laugh is super trustworthy. Does well does that does that set the whole test or whatever for the robots and stuff? Does that say more about us as a species and where we're going that we trust things that look more fake because of maybe like our media landscape? Oh yeah. Well, I think once again it looks at the big thing that's being ignored here is how many of us at this table and listening at home would sit down and answer questions about an adversarial network. Who has time for that? I would yeah. not even. Gullible people, that's who has time for that. People who so. follow influencers and <laughs> right. marketers, yeah. yeah. So you, it's always gonna be a skewed result. Well, we've seen several cases about AI and the things they produce in terms of patents and trademarks and copyright. And I think the European ones were the ones that ruled on this, right? Like Germany or somebody? Mm. But now we have the U.S. Copyright Office. The U.S. Copyright Office says that AI cannot copyright its art. Now, it requires a human element. This guy went out of his way to make sure that there was no human input at all in this piece of art right here. This is what the, the AI came up with. Krista, you're the, uh, the art critic. It looks like a puzzle. You know, like a puzzle someone does and then frames it on their wall. Do a lot of people do that? Yeah, it's like kind of a granny thing. It's always an image like that, like a railroad or a garden. Can't or a rabbit it. in the sunshine. You can probably copyright the thing the guy put together to make that. But he was so careful to try to separate that. He mm -hmm. tried to put enough distance between the two that you couldn't attribute it back to him. Mm -hmm. So the copyright office is like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, nobody gets it. And another Roblox story. Now we did a story about this guy. He is a Roblox troll. He seems to do it for a living with his YouTube channel. But those days are over. Court orders YouTubers to stay, or YouTuber in particular, to stay off Roblox. Ruben Sam accused of uh, leading cyber mob on the game platform. What a weird thing to do. That gets more and more awful as he gets older, right? Because yeah. he probably started out fairly young and it was like, okay, maybe teenage Roblox, whatever. But at this point, it's time to move Man's on. Man's probably in his 20s. Yeah. Maybe even more than that. Well, he, his next game, what do you think he'll go to? Probably Minecraft, right? That was kind of, Minecraft had a huge content creator pool for a while. I think it still does, but a lot of them have moved on. You know, Probably Chris, to Roblox. Uh, You've not played the Microsoft Minecraft. A lot of people in the comments pointed out that, in fact, the Microsoft Minecraft has it just riddled with microtransactions and user-created content that you have to buy. Wow. Wow, that sucks. Big money in those worlds. I'm sure that Microsoft, when they bought Minecraft, they were looking right at Roblox, right? Yeah. They're like, oh, we're mm. going to make it that. That's sad. And Notch took that billion dollars, and then he went in his shower and cried like in leaving <laughs> Las Vegas my child this was this is a if you want to if you love articles that are packed with AI buzzwords my god is this the article for you because that's just piled higher and higher and higher with buzzwords if you don't know what these words mean you're not going to get anything out of this text Microsoft details a planet scale AI infrastructure packing a hundred thousand plus GPUs so Microsoft basically wants to build a general purpose supercomputer but that also can run business workloads and uh, each node in this thing is just bananas and the whole trick here is to be able to add scale to any process without that process being aware of you adding scale so seamlessly oh now we've got something that needs a big load we got the, cl the clear view ai it's looking for a face we need it to be able to use a lot of stuff it can just quickly ramp up as much as it needs there's a lot of details in there about that that I don't understand, but that's what it does. You can go from zero to a million dollars in monthly billing in <laughs> 2.4 seconds. When someone compromises your Azure account, you can go broke, and it's like it's like the South Park, and it's gone. <laughs> uh, we did not have a black hole story this week. I'm sorry. This one's exciting, though. But this is as close as I could get. The sun has erupted nonstop all month, and there are more giant flares coming. So... If you want to not sleep tonight, you should look up the Carrington event. <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, also, if you're interested in this kind of thing, I would recommend the website spaceweather.com. It feels like a relic from a different age. It feels like it was done in like the early 2000s, but it talks about this kind of stuff. And you can also sign up for text alerts on your phone. 
if so you're worried about CMEs. <laughs> we have just left the solar minimum. Are, are we sure about that yet? Anyway, We're the, not sure. the magnetic, like we are. magnetic field is going to flip if it has not already on the sun, and it's going to get real angry for a little while. Yeah. I like to think that all of those uh, ejections that it's doing are in solidarity with Ukraine. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's ejecting away from Earth, though, which is a very nice courtesy, but you got to figure that, you know, what's the chances of it ejecting toward Earth? Is that a 50-50 chance? You ever be standing there like you're out in the cold and you're having a conversation with somebody who's smoking a cigarette and they do that thing where they blow it out the side of their mouth not to blow it in your face yeah i like to think that's what the sun is doing. <laughs> <laughs> they got enough crap going on right now i won't add to it right now is it one 365th of a chance i don't i don't know that seems like it would be dangerously high <laughs> is our i don't think that our grid is really designed to handle another no. carrington style event uh, no it was not good the first time it happened but we didn't have a lot of electrical infrastructure at the time no there's a paper on it that was published by the u.s government in like 92 or 93 and at that time they said that it would take between two and seven years to manufacture enough transformers to replace all of the transformers that had died would would be dead as a result of a Carrington event. That was when we didn't have a crippled supply chain. Yeah. Yes, that was when we didn't have a crippled supply chain. And the authors of that paper went out of their way to point out that if the uh, downed transformers affected our ability to produce transformers, then the timeline could be beyond seven years. Now, what if? When that new event happens, we had gotten rid of most of the internal combustion engines. It would have been much worse. Will be. <laughs> a lot of cars have a lot of electronics in them, too. I think the win-win is to have both, because you use your internal combustion engine to charge the batteries in your car, which is running your house. That's terrorism. That? <laughs> that's, that's killing the planet. Well, we have a robot birthday. Let's all take a moment. We won't actually do it, but you should pause the video and quietly hum happy birthday. NASA's Perseverance rover makes its first year hunting past life on Mars. Marks its first year. Does he sing to himself like the other one? I don't think so. Oh. That's so sad. Here's his path. He's been playing this open world game and he hasn't managed to explore very much. <laughs> He's still very low level. <laughs> He's not got good armor yet. There's the helicopter. He's left it behind. Do you think he for, like he forgot it and he's like, oh, crap, and it takes him another yeah. month to get back there? You know that uh, that meme where Wolverine is looking at the picture? He does that every night. <laughs> when he looks at the <laughs> helicopter, he's like, oh, I'm going to go get that. Well, the tensions between Russia and the West are something that's not going to go away anytime soon. But imagine if you had to experience those tensions trapped in a tiny metal can with people from the two countries. Russia's space agency warns that U.S. sanctions could destroy cooperation on the International Space Station. Oh, it's in CNN politics. Uh, NASA also put out a press release. Is that the next one? Do we have that one? No. I saw that too. And but NASA was like, it's probably fine. Yeah, NASA's it's like, okay. we'll get everybody home safe. Don't worry, it's fine. Now they point out that in fact, the space station is divided in half. There is a Russian side and a U.S. side. The U.S. side has the batteries. The Russian side has the propulsion. So <laughs> they, they got to work together. Yeah, they cannot exist separately. I always love an animal story where the animals show incredible intelligence. And it seems like birds have a lot of that that we have not witnessed so far. Magpies have outwitted scientists by helping each other remove tracking devices. They also do that upside down thing, which is adorable. Look, Look at, at them. What a trickster. My aunt, who lived in the middle of nowhere, had trained magpies to bring her marbles. So this little thing is like one of those uh, anti-theft devices at the grocery store where it's a magnet, and when you run the magnet over it, it pops off. They said that unless you had a magnet... You would need a very, very strong pair of scissors to ever dream about getting these off of a bird. Well, guess what the birds figured out about 30 minutes after they put them on. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got a hummingbird feeder the other day. It's not time to put it up yet, but maybe I can do some cool stuff like this. Maybe I attract magpies too. They look like they're so proud of what they did. Yeah, <laughs> that's like an album cover. So good job on the magpies. They, the scientists were actually pretty good scientists because they were like, you know what? What we set out to learn 
we couldn't learn it all. This ruined our project, but we learned a new thing. Yeah. <laughs> so it's even better. They're still high-fiving each other. Yeah. And that's the spirit that science should be. We also have a test when it comes to animals. Chris, did you think Rue would pass the mirror test? You could give it to her. Is that just where like they recognize it as a mirror image of themselves? You put a mark on them that you know that they'll notice and see when they look in the mirror that you see if they're aware that that mark is on them and they try to deal with it. I don't know that Rue would. I used to put her in front of a mirror when she was a puppy, but she was a lot dumber then. My cats, if you show them a mirror that's on the ground, they try to look behind it mm-hmm. to find mm-hmm. out where the cat is. Oh, uh, Rue doesn't do that. Rue looks at the mirror, but I think she registers that that is not another dog. Well, turns out these dumb fish are way ahead of these are our animals. Our animals. Yeah. yeah. Scientists demonstrate self-awareness in fish. They did both of those tests. They marked a fish in a way that you know they wouldn't know, but then they saw themselves in the mirror and said, "Oh, I need to scrape this off." And they, they, they didn't do that if they didn't have a mirror. They would swim over and try to scrape it off, which is hilarious. I guess that's how fish do that. Hmm. Yeah, the other test was, instead of a mirror, a tank full of other fish who also had marks. So if they saw that, would they think that was them? No, they knew. They knew huh. that wasn't them. Well, that kind of makes eating fish a little weird, doesn't it? Come on. <laughs> it was always weird. It was always octopus. weird, yeah. Oh, I got yeah. no problem with it at all. I mean, cows are adorable, right? Yeah. They don't deserve that, but we got to eat. There's a new kind of Mountain Dew, and uh, it's people are going to be getting wild on this. There's going to be oh, a lot. bad news for us. A lot of sorority girls, I bet, are going <laughs> to love this. Florida residents will be among the first in the nation subjugated by hard Mountain Dew. This is going to be huge on Twitch. We're going to see ads for this. <laughs> I don't like the. Uh, I don't really like the word choice in the headline, but uh, this is this is Mountain Dew that's alcoholic. Was subjugated? Is that what you disagree with? Yeah, I mean, it's it's, just, it feels weird, doesn't it? Yeah, it's not. It's not going to subjugate anything. I think the the idea here is like the stereotypical Mountain Dew consumer is not someone we need to add alcohol to. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's going to be really. And the popular, only proper though. way to enjoy alcoholic Mountain Dew is just pure grain alcohol or moonshine. Didn't you, one of you mix Mountain Dew with alcohol? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I had the vodka and apple juice. Yeah. Really well. That was good. <laughs> Not getting it till next year, guys. Don't get excited. <laughs> now, if you are excited about new uh, drink themes, new trends mm. in the drinking world, but you say, hey, I'm an alcoholic, I'm recovering, I can't have alcohol, what's the hot new drink for me? It's this. <laughs> Woman has quit her job to breastfeed her boyfriend full time? In Question Atlanta. mark? <sighs> yeah, that's what happened. Krista, I'm going to admit some ignorance here. She found a way to keep herself lactating forever. How do you do that? I assume you have to take some sort of hormone supplement, I would think. I'm not certain either, but I, I think something about pregnancy, that's what unlocks it. So either she was pregnant recently or she found a way to create that hormone balance where she's lactating you know all those ads where uh it says that there are milfs in your area (laughs) and they're looking to contact you i always assume that those were completely false but according to this story this this girl jennifer mulford was actively searching for someone to be a partner in her adult breastfeeding relationship Hmm. and it took her a long time apparently a lot of guys when they were faced with the idea that she wanted them to do this kind of noped out (laughs) but she eventually found a bodybuilder who believes that breast milk is good for that kind of thing and it seems to be a perfect match that's so strange to me because most of my friends who have breastfed have been like it's fine but it's not something i'd want to do long term because it can hurt yeah and adult teeth yeah Mm -hmm. i mean i guess the adult knows not to yeah Mm -hmm. but still to buy it a lot of questions there. <sighs> a lot of questions. Well, we have uh, another headline, which I'm sure some people are happy was completely covered over. Didn't really get a lot of... Uh, this is the one where last week there it was like, a pre- please, prosecutor, don't announce these until after the election. And the prosecutor's like, here you go. All right, yeah. Oh, one thing we can say for sure is during the unrest in our country back uh, a couple years ago there, that we have 
you know, evident, video evidence, incontrovertible, I would say, that the police just beat the piss out of several of those people. Yeah. And that video is something you can't really pass up, so... 19 Austin police officers indicted after investigation into 2020 George Floyd protests, documents say. Hmm. It took a, a while for the uh, carriage of justice to come around. Now, you're Two wondering, years. like, why did you put this in the nonsense section? And the reason, like, it's funny because when I'm reading the headlines on other sites, sometimes they cherry pick them. And, uh, Oof. yeah, that's horrific. We probably can't show that. Oh, here we go. Here's the reason. Here's the headline that got me to call this nonsense. Eight of the officers were released on a $1 cash deposit bond each with no additional bond conditions, their lawyer said Monday. Uh. The the image that we can't show is an image of some of the injuries that people got from the cops. That was a rubber bullet. Yeah, they can point blank range. mess you up. Yeah. yeah, we can't show you that, but it's, it's a big hole. Ugh. Big Ugh. hole. We got another story of a young politician who has done quite the faux pas. This is terrible. <laughs> she blames it on a sleeping pill. I'm not sure if I believe that. Use house candidate sorry for intoxication during sleepover. Even if it was a sleeping pill, why would you take that when you knew you were going to be supervising children? Or why would you be drinking on top of yeah. it? Yeah. Because she admits that al- it was, she says the alcohol in the sleeping pill was too much and it overwhelmed her. So she vomited in a hamper and she verbally accosted two of the girls. One of them, she made fun of her acne, and the Which, other one, her Spanish heritage. That's oh. awful. Yeah. And she refuses to apologize. <laughs> I, what a terrible human being. Yeah, well, she apologized, like, she made a press conference, but she hasn't called the families to be like, I'm so sorry. Which, wow. Mm. Well, family dollar. We, we have a lot of dollar generals around yeah, here. Uh, we we're a, a dollar general family. We don't go to family dollar. I read this and I was like, oh, God, is that? No, no, no it's not no. dollar general. I'm, I'm safe. Although I imagine dollar general warehouses are probably pretty bad, too. Yeah, mm. they're pocket dimensions. But maybe not as bad as family dollar. Over 1,000 dead rodents found at Family Dollar Distribution Center. So, heads up. Now, a lot of people in the audience uh, use Family Dollar. There's a huge list of products that are probably not something you should deal with from Family Dollar right now because, oh boy, the rodents. Yeah. Dollar General, where it's at? Food items, cosmetics, animal foods, medical devices, Ugh. you know, bandages, nasal care products, blah, blah, blah. Over-the-counter medications, pain medications, dental products. Yeah, you don't, you don't want any of that because... Even if it looks clean, it can still be contaminated. Even things like soda, you can. There were there were a couple of cases growing up where people would get soda from like the local discount chain, and the rodent problem there was so bad that the rodent dust left on cans of soda that were otherwise you put it to your lips, and then yeah, ugh. it was enough to make some people sick. So people always point that out about your uh, orange sodas. Yeah, yeah, when I just get them randomly in the mail yeah. and it's like, oh yeah, blah blah blah. I look, I don't, you know, I don't I don't like get an alcohol wipeout and wipe it down. Like you probably should. I, <laughs> now we're like, hmm. I bet at least once at that warehouse or one like it, some of those rats got into NyQuil or something and just tripped balls for the rest <laughs> of the night. Can you imagine like one capsule of NyQuil, how bad that would mess up a rat? Yeah. Well, this story I was disappointed with. Uh, I was expecting... uh, A little more. I was expecting a video of a dog going at high speeds around a speedway. That's not what this is. This video is so silly. (laughs) This uh, Fox 29 reports that this deaf dog has been saved from euthanasia and is driving around a Daytona speedway. Look how unhappy this dog looks. I'm going to try to mute this real quick. He's not even like... you know. Dogs kind of have a smiley look on him a lot. He's just looking around like, okay. That dog does not know what's going on. It doesn't care. There's nothing heartwarming about this. Fox 29, this was a terrible heartwarming animal story. We wanted a heartwarming animal story to make up for all the sads. We need heartwarming animal stories. <laughs> this story is somewhat heartwarming just because it's so stupid. And I don't even know if this is yeah, real. Yeah, we're kind of thinking not, it might not this, be real. It's canceled because there aren't any people anymore. Yeah, it doesn't matter anymore. And it might be fake news. But there is enough madness in this man that we've seen before <laughs> that I feel like it could be real. <laughs> Mike Lindell plans to top, drop 10,000 my pillows. Those are the ones that he can't sell anymore. <laughs> via little parachutes to Ottawa <laughs> protesters. <laughs> so he tried to send them in by truck, as you normally would, but of that, course... That doesn't work. They don't mm. let those in, especially if it says Mike Lindell on the, the shipping label. 
So he decided he was going to... How far do you think this project got if it's real? Like, is somebody <laughs> knitting tiny parachutes right now? And he's like, no. oh, you can stop. He, he's like, I had an idea. Okay, let's put that on social media and see how that goes. He's like, <laughs> great. We're good to go. We got the press. Hey, Mike, do you want to put that on your social media platform? Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. That didn't work out at no. all. And, uh, you know, I mean, this is not really all that unique, but in the age of social media, this kind of thing gets pointed out a lot quicker. These guys can't get away with this nonsense anymore. Tennessee preacher Greg Locke says demons told him the names of witches in his church. Why are you talking to demons, bro? <laughs> to find out the names of the witches in your church. <laughs> this is, Why are you talking to the demons? This is the same guy that what, what, did, 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 uh, did the book burning, I think. Right, yes. Yeah. Uh, He's been doing... A, He's got this word, pharmakai, devil. I think that's his way of making like the pharmaceutical industry is controlled by demons or something like that. Hmm. So he's got a lot of interesting uh, theories about all that stuff. We will not tolerate that, Locker wrote. He's <laughs> even talking about the witchcraft. <laughs> yeah, apparently he also preached at length about the witches and he knew who they were and that they shouldn't get up right now. It's like, do you think, is there anyone in the audience who's like, maybe it's me? And they start getting freaked out. <laughs> oh, and they're going to lure the church members into adultery with their uh, demonic sluttiness. You know what this feels a lot like? Ethiopia Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> and again, how do you, how do you moderate that? Yeah, because I mean, if you say he's making it up, you're going to have to block a lot of people talking about that subject, right? So no way to do it. And here's a fun modern technology story. Although, again, this is one of those things where like old society meets new society. And it just gets crazy. Because <laughs> we're coexisting in a world where we have smartphones and arranged marriage. <laughs> Google Maps leads Indonesian man to the wrong wedding venue and nearly ends up marrying a stranger. Because there were two weddings. Like, this, this is a great movie. Like, we need. Can we get Michael Bay on this? Can he make the movie? Is it going to be great? Oh, Michael, Michael Bay. <laughs> yeah, he's not the right director. Are there going to be explosions at the weddings? Yeah, exactly. So, uh, he went to the wrong wedding, but it was a different arranged marriage wedding. I think. I thought one was like an engagement. So, like, he was going to get engaged or something. I don't know. Either way, there was a mix up. Well, they showed up and they exchanged gifts. And they were having a good time and enjoying themselves. And it wasn't until well into the ceremony that somebody figured out, just based on context, wait a minute, I'm in the wrong spot. And they talked to the bride-to-be at the, the wedding that he went to by mistake. And she was like, yeah, it was weird because I didn't recognize anybody, but I just went with it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this is just what my life is now. Oops. But isn't it kind of what their life is? Mm. Like, does she have a lot of autonomy over any of this? Yeah, probably not. But you, I would think you'd see your own family there, even if you saw no one else you recognized. No, because she was t all of his family came with him. Oh. So they did. The families knew one another, but all of a sudden he showed up with an entourage, and she was like, "I don't know. I don't know any of these guys." Yeah. Eileen Gu is not Chinese. Now I'm not saying that ethnically. I think she's a mix, but she was born in San Francisco. She was raised in San Francisco. She learned how to do her sport in San Francisco. She's an American citizen. She's, in, uh, yes, an American citizen. There is no dual citizenship for China and the U.S. unless this is a special case that the Communist Party is granted, which maybe they did. I don't think they did, according to this article. But she decided in the Olympics she wasn't going to represent America, which, in my opinion, as adorable as she is, and she is adorable. She should never be allowed back on American soil for any reason. <laughs> and none of her offspring should either. Eileen Gu defends China's internet freedom, but her message is censored. What was her message? China's completely free. You can download a VPN off the App Store if you're really worried about it. That message was censored. And also false. Yeah. <laughs> and, and people in China were furious about this. They were like, what the hell are you talking about? No, the internet is not free. Now, in her defense, she probably has never seen the real communist party yeah. she's no. seen a very loving communist party who thinks she's the best thing in the world and she probably didn't know that she can get a vpn but most people can't <laughs> she didn't know that they knew but they how, knew how long do you think before she realizes the darkness can, like whenever she becomes <sighs> less useful to them i don't know i 
is it possible that she doesn't now? I mean, wow, she's probably pretty young if she's a, oh, a first-time yeah, yeah. Olympic contender. She's probably like 18, 19. She is, I think she is 19, yes. It'll, it'll take a while. She'll probably pick it up, though. I mean, she... And also, if she were to say anything else, it destroys her life, right? Right. But she could have gone gotten brought that gold medal back to the good old US of A and not worried about it. <laughs> I didn't know you could just compete for another country like that. You like, shouldn't be able to. I thought it had to be like the place you're a citizen of. It should be. But I don't know. I guess because China was running the Olympics this year, they could... I thought the Olympic Committee was above all that though right uh, I don't think anyone thinks the Olympics is totally fair the Olympics is kind of kind of messed up kind of ruined at this point right mm. and our final story and this was a last minute edition and I'm so glad to have it because my god is this guy adorable look at him <laughs> he is uh, remember uh, 747 <laughs> yeah the, the Alaskan winner of the fattest bear I think this guy's got him beat <laughs> Hank the Tank, a 500-pound bear, was initially blamed for Lake Tahoe break-ins, but DNA evidence has told a different story. How much does it cost to do DNA typing for that kind of thing these days? Is it fairly cheap these days? I yeah. guess it is, because like 23andMe and stuff. Yeah. But they actually wasted time. Look at the this absolute unit. <laughs> this little tiny face <laughs> and that giant body. <laughs> and there's so much head and fat behind the face. Yeah. That's just... But, and you would think at this point in the year... Shouldn't he be hibernating? I mean, that could be an old image. Yeah, he should probably be hibernating. <laughs> so it seems like what happened was the, t- the the bear broke in, made some headlines, and then some criminals were like, that sounds like an opportunity. <laughs> they, they found a black dog and brushed it a bunch yeah. and got the, the dog fur and took it with them and sprinkled it. I don't know if they did that, but that'd be smart if they did. Apparently not, because they, they cleared Hank's name. Bear League. Is Bear League people who take videos of bears and post them on a website? Black bears coming back more. In, I mean, they've always been black bears in eastern Kentucky, but they're becoming more prevalent. I bet he stinks to high heaven. But if you knew he wouldn't be violent, he'd be lovable. Wouldn't you love to just cuddle him? Yeah. Just, like, just get on his back. <laughs> That's the greatest part about having, like, Rue. Because Rue's, you know, she's not huge like that. But she's 60 pounds, so you can give her a big hug. Yeah. You could just lay on top of this guy. Yeah. Just snuggle into him. Yeah, Rue doesn't like that. But Hank would. <laughs> Have you laid on top of Rue? <laughs> yeah. Like, I'll, I'll lay and put my head on her haunch. And she'll, mm, and then, like, wiggle out. <laughs> That's the finest well, thing about having a dog. It's been quite a week. Let's hope that next week is uh, unexpected news about maybe a ceasefire or something. Oh, yeah, just good news. More calm. Calm. Yeah. Good news. Less historical events. Woo. We'll see you next week. Bye.